Okay, welcome back to my channel. Today is a bit different. This is one is discussing, or more of a reaction video, to a very well respected audio reviewer by the name of John Darko. Um, someone that I respect very much and have watched over the recent years. I've also read all his articles before he became a um, YouTuber. But um, now I think he's sort of dabbling in an area that he's not too familiar or comfortable with, which is um, Atmos Music. Um, I've been a big fan of surround music since the late 90s. Um, started with Dolby, Dolby uh, Audios and SAD model channels, even before that actually. Of course I've always been in the home theatre. Uh, my first taste was music concert videos. I just remember walking into a hi-fi store and had a demonstration of the, the Eagles when hell freezes over and that played on a good 5.1 system in DTS, surround sound, it still to this day is one of the best recorded concerts of all time. And it really does um, bring the hairs of your neck and goosebumps and all that sort of stuff. So from then on, I really did um, devote my energy into a decent multi-channel music playback system, which today I think I've um, got pretty close to perfecting. And we've um, now with Apple Music on board, where you can actually stream, stream multi-channel music into your home. That was just unheard of only a couple of years ago. So to me, it's a real godsend. But to um, some audio files, unfortunately, it's still a bit of a, I don't know if it's a, a black magic, or they don't believe in it, or they don't want to spend the time in setting it up properly. They spend the time and money on two channel, but that seems to where it stops. They don't understand that you've got to spend time and money also on good Atmos music. Just the same way you've got to spend time and money on good two channel, uh, two channel system. So that's going into a screensaver. So, so we'll dive into a few dot points and um, express my opinions and see how we go. So that's where John explains how many speakers you need for a Atmos system, which is correct. Yes, you do need a lot of speakers. Um, not necessarily this many. You can sort of delete um, at least two of these speakers. Um, so you can have just your front, your front three, your center, left and right, and surround left and right. And then either two overheads or four overheads. Uh, and you'll see an example. You'll see an example of my system in a second. But um, yes, to do it correctly, you do need to run some wires to the back of your room, and even depending what sort of house configuration you have. You can run right wires through your ceiling and then place um, some insetting speakers in for your height channels. But yes, it is, I do agree, it is a inconvenience if you're not going to devote a lot of time to it. But if you really want to be enthusiastic and really get into it, then it is definitely worth, worth doing. So yes, you do need a lot of speakers for a Dolby Atmos system. But as I said before, if you in the home theater anyway, you should have this set up in place already. And if you really want to explore Dolby Atmos music, then yes, you will take the time and the effort to invest and do the work in achieving this, just like you would for a great two-channel system. And so yes, as you can see, I've got a front speaker, which is a Magnipan 0.7, subwoofer in the corner there. You've got a center speaker, another front, Subwoofer tucked away in the corner, then my height speakers, surround back, surround back, and then height speakers and one right above me, which makes for a 5.2, two subs, 0.4, four overheads. Now he also states that you need a dedicated Blu-ray player to play back the, the Blu-ray disc, which is correct, but there are, are other ways around that as well, just like with CDs, with music streaming. You can rip all your CDs to a NAS or a hard drive. You can do the same thing for your Blu-ray audios. You can rip your Blu-ray audios to an MKV format, and then you can um, watch them all back for convenience use on the one location. So, for example, you get a, a media player, and then, um, yeah, you can watch them all that way. So I'll show you how, how you can do that. So this is called a Zabiti media player. There's another brand called Zadu, which I which I believe is a much better player because with the Zadu you can get better quality cover arts so it looks much nicer. But with this one we can just go straight to a file list and as you can see all my 
these are all my Blu-ray audios and DVD audios. So because you can rip them, they're a video component, you can rip them to an MKV format, which um, which leaves perfectly lossless audio, audio there. So you're not, not losing it at all. So we'll go to um, yeah, something like Bob Marley, and you can see how quickly it can load up. So you're not waiting for the menus, you're not putting an actual disc in. So there we go, that's playing now. You, that click was the sound of the AVR keying in to say that it is multi-channel. But of course it's got no sound because so I don't want to get the video blacklisted for any reason. But yeah, you can sit back and enjoy the scrolling videos that are on there. Another super convenient way to enjoy multi-channel music is with the uh, software Rune. This is the same program that sponsors John Darko's channel. So he uh, is very familiar with it. So um, the way to get CDs, or two channel CDs, onto Rune is you need to rip them to a hard drive. Well, it's the same thing as multi-channel music. You rip your DVD audios or SACDs, or even you can rip your Blu-rays as well. But it's just as it is just going to put them on to Rune as 5.1. Rune does not have the... Um, yeah, it just it can't do Atomos at the moment, which is unfortunate. But hopefully that will... Uh, resolve in future updates we'll see how that goes but i have all my 5.1s on room so all i do is go to albums now i can go focus now if i go across right across to format types or channel layouts there i have them all there so i can go even quad for example 5.1s five and i got a couple of 7.1s so that's pretty cool. Now I'll scroll down, and there they all are. So you click on Bob Marley, for example, 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, 5.1 sound. So that is just on my Rune Rock, which is the computer that, that um, you'll see soon. And that just directly HDMI out to AVR and outputs to 5.1 speakers. Here John explains, or he actually states that he winces at the cost of running, or putting in more speakers, or running more speaker cable. Well, I actually wince at the idea of um, you know, spending a lot of money, even though I would love to do it if I had that money, I've got no objections to it, but spend, spending 20K on a streamer, or up to 10 or even 20K on a, on a DAC for two channel music is the same sort of theory in my book. So I don't quite get that one. Now here John um, talks about how heavily it is, um, well Dolby Atmos or Apple Music in particular, is heavily compressed, which on Bluetooth it is, so of course it is. If you're pumping out all those channels through a Bluetooth stream on a pair of headphones, of course it's gonna be. But to listen to it the way that it's intended to be listened to, which is on a Apple TV box, that's coming out directly to an AVR with a physical connection, which is HDMI, then the compression is very minimal at the best. Um, it's not perfect, it's not as good as a disc, but it's, a, it's the equivalent to say a Netflix stream, with what they call Dolby Digital Plus, um, and it's very, very um, close to the real disc. So what you can do, you can listen to say, for example, ABC, the lexicon above, and if you like it, you buy the hard copy. Now, it's just, there's a trust thing when I say that it's, it's probably so close, it's um, very hard to, to tell the difference. And I've noticed in the past couple of months and probably years, the quality in Apple Music is improving all the time. Um, so to say that it's heavily compressed, I don't think he's quite right, but it is compressed. So we have to take it, take it from there. So please excuse the extreme mess here, it's not the most tidy system in the world. But there is a, a PC sitting in the corner, now that's my Rune Rock, which also plays not only all my two-channel music, but my multi-channel music as well. Now that goes from HDMI out of the PC into that AVR, and that's what, that's what decodes, so I get 5.1 music, completely lossless straight to my speaker system. 
So yeah, I think John should have explained how you can really have all systems in one. Um, you can really have a good two-channel system and multi-channel system in the one system. So keep on watching and I'll explain how that can be done. But um, yeah, just at the end of John's video, he's um, alluded to him that he's about to interview Stephen Wilson. So hopefully um, Stephen can explain much better than me on how great Atmos music can be and the future of Atmos music, how it's only going to get bigger and bigger. And um, so yeah, looking forward to John's interview with Stephen Wilson. Now, if I want to play two channel music on my system, all I do is um, change my input to room, mu to room music. Now that is now fed from my the streamer is a, just a Raspberry Pi, which goes into a DAC, and that just goes into the analog inputs of my Integra AVR, which also has Direct Live, which has been fully set up. Now, I know my MagiPen speakers um, are very, very inefficient, so they need a lot of power, so the Integra AVR just won't cut it, so that's why you've got to add a separate power amp. So definitely, definitely must get a AVR with a dedicated um, a, a pre-out, so that goes to a power amp, and that feeds the front speakers. So just to backtrack, the way to get multi-channel is by HDMI, and that runs directly into the AVR to get Dolby Atmos music from Apple Music. That goes from Apple TV by HDMI into the AVR. And to get um, lossless Atmos music, goes from a media player such as that, from H HDMI, also into another input on the AVR. Um, there are other, other ways to do it. You can get a uh, preamp with a dedicated home theater bypass, which is at a, at a press of a button. You can just use it as a pure two-channel device. So two channels from the, um, the preamp will go to a power amp, which will bypass the AVR completely for just pure two-channel music and when you want to play multi-channel music or Dolby Atmos you turn that off and then the um, AVR will come into play. So there are many many ways to enjoy both formats of music or all formats of music really with um, pretty much one system. So yeah hopefully you enjoy this video explains a bit about multi-channel music I'm very passionate about it and sometimes when I see videos such as that, it sort of gets me back up a bit. But um, anyway, as long as we all in it for the right reasons, we all enjoy music. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Please subscribe and I'll catch you later. Bye.